So open your Bible to Acts 20, 28. And as you do that, I want you to consider. Consider what's valuable to you. We tend to value highly that which we pay a high price for. Something which cost us dearly to obtain tends to be most precious to us. And so it is with God. I want you to look around. Look at the people gathered here. Consider this local church and what does this church mean to you? What does the church mean to you? How valuable is it? What kind of priority, what kind of care, what importance do you place on this gathering and its people in your heart? What did you have in mind as you drove here today? When you came in, when you moved among the people of the church, you got coffee and you had conversations and you sat down. Now, more importantly, consider what does the church mean to God? In Acts 20:28, 20, speaking to the Ephesian elders about the importance of guarding themselves and guarding the flock over which the Holy Spirit had made them overseers, Paul makes a startling statement. You may be familiar with this statement. I hope that you hear it with new ears and you hear it the way that it was intended to startle the Ephesian elders into a sober-minded alertness. Your local church was purchased with God's own blood. Acts 20:28. 20, Paul says to the elders, be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. This church, every church, Every one of the church's members is precious and ought to be cared for diligently because God purchased them. He purchased the church, this church, with his own blood. God paid this blood price, of course, in Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, fully God, who became fully man, in order to give his life as a ransom for many. You were ransomed, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. How does Jesus view the church? He loved her and gave himself up for her. He nourishes the church and cherishes her. And one day, very soon, because of the effectiveness of this blood-bought redemption to accomplish our perfect glorification, he will present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, so that she might be holy without blemish. So each Sunday, as you look forward to gathering, each Sunday as we gather, as we prioritize gathering as the church, consider the church and its members the way God does, as precious and worthy of care because they were purchased with God's own blood. As we gather, as we come together, let there be no selfishness, no divisions. Christian, you cannot think of yourself here today or any time throughout the week, any time once you're saved, you cannot think of yourself merely as an individual, but rather as a spirit-appointed member of this precious blood-bought body. And if you forget this on your way into church, if you forget this 
Any time, may this weekly reminder of Jesus and his body and blood given for you that we celebrate in communion, may this reorient you. It was this unawareness of God's blood-bought church, even while they took these physical reminders of body and blood, that Paul admonished the Corinthians for in the famous passage in 1 Corinthians 11 that we often read during communion. If we understand the purpose of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross rightly, we know it wasn't just to save individuals, but to purchase a people, a body, a bride, the church, to be a unified whole that would love each other with a self-sacrificial love. Each individual is a member of one another, a member of the church, not living to serve to serve and nourish itself, but rather, as Ephesians 4.16 says, each individual part causing the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. God set it up this way because the church is precious to him and he has a precious goal for the church. Yet many in the Corinthian church came to the church gathering and even to the time of eating and drinking in remembrance of Jesus with their minds on themselves, oblivious to the needs of others, oblivious to the calling that God gave them when he saved them to be a part of the church. The fact that this church and all of its members are precious to God, purchased with his blood, it's the basis that the el- on which the elders are to keep a close watch on themselves and the flock. And it's the basis for each member to look to each other and prioritize and care for one another. The Corinthians didn't discern the blood-bought body of Christ of which they were a part, even as they took the bread and juice. And this was the unworthy manner in which they were Taken, taking the Lord's Supper that 1 Corinthians eleven twenty seven 27 describes. And Paul said that the self-centered oblivion to the blood-bought church was actually in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty two. 22. He describes it as despising the church of God. The very church of God that he bought with his own blood. So now let's think about us, you and me, Grace Bible Church. The Lord's Supper each week is a precious opportunity to examine ourselves and to examine ourselves in relation to one another, in relation to the church. We ought to reorient our priorities, reorient our focus and recognize that we are not our own. We have been bought with a price and we were placed into this body of Christ So where you discern divisions, bitterness, selfishness, or any other thing that's not consistent with what God saved you for as a part of the body, confess that now and repent. Then take the bread and juice and care for the body that you've been made a part of, recognizing your part in it and its value and preciousness to the Lord who purchased it at an incredible cost. If you're not a Christian, when the bread and juice comes, let it pass. This time is for those who have been saved by grace to remember their Savior who died in our place, taking the punishment for our sins that we deserved. He took that on himself so that we could be forgiven and reconciled to him. This gracious free gift can only be received by faith. So if you do not have faith in him, this gift isn't yours. You haven't yet been reconciled to God. You have nothing to remember, nothing to proclaim when the bread and juice comes. So just let it pass when it does come. But I beg you, don't harden your heart any longer. Do not trust in yourself and your works. Believe in Jesus and you will be saved. So don't leave here without talking to me, a pastor, whoever brought you. There's going to be people to your left over here after the service. Come and pray with them. But for now, just let the bread and juice pass when it comes. But for all those who are gods, who are Christ, who have been purchased by that precious blood, 
Take the bread and juice when it comes and remember and proclaim Jesus' death. Men, please come and serve us. Take communion on your own, and I will pray in a few minutes.